What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is another Chance Encounter. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. Our line today is kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg. Today I'm joined with Marcus Long. How are you doing today, Marcus? Doing awesome. Uh, how about yourself, Dan? Oh, I can't really complain. It's a very nice Tuesday. But uh, if you haven't watched a chance encounter before you in the audience, this is how it works. I interview commercial real estate investors and I've narrowed down the motivations for getting your next commercial property down to five. I go through each of them. I say, hey, which one's you? And then I go through the six different roles in a commercial deal as part of the GP team. And I say, what's your core competency? What are you going to do? But if you're going to be successful in any industry at all, you have to be able to effectively introduce yourself. So Marcus, could you please introduce yourself for the audience? Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. I'm a uh... I said Marcus Long. I'm a husband, a father of a seven and four year old. I'm an active duty naval officer at the uh, tail end of my career, currently stationed in England, and the founder and CEO of A Long Legacy, a company I created to provide uh, educational uh, resources and opportunities to help others, you know, achieve financial freedom, make an impact, and leave a legacy. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to pull up the motivation piece real quick here. Be now, if I go like this. Boom. All right. So uh, beginners know their motivation for getting into commercial real estate, but they don't know the role that they're likely to play. So that's why I go through the motivations first. So the first motivation that people have for getting their next commercial deal is that they're trying to preserve their purchasing power. That does mean that they have a substantial nest egg. So we're talking you know, family offices, basically anyone who relies on the cash flow from their wealth to make ends meet, that's what they're up to because inflation is the biggest fear. They're concerned that basically the cash flow won't be worth as much and then they're going to have all sorts of problems and the party is going to be over. So that's motivation number one. Motivation number two is the one that matches mine, which is trading time for wealth. As a high earner in tech, just like uh, 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 Mark, I know you have some sort of, uh, uh, Marcus, you have some sort of uh, background in tech. Uh, you might be in the same situation, which is that if you are a high earner, that's the highest amount of tax that you're ever going to pay. So me personally, I realized, why don't I just pivot into commercial real estate? And then that way I'm being re rewarded for my effort in the form of wealth. And I get all the uh, tax advantages of that. And it makes way more sense. The third reason is the most common one, which is fast tracking retirement. Now there are a couple things that are implied in fast tracking the retirement. First of all, if you're in your early 20s and you're telling me you're fast tracking your retirement, I'm not going to believe you because you have to start with something before that that's actually going to work. But the second thing about fast tracking your retirement, it means that there is an end goal in sight where you're looking to basically rest on your laurels. And that's in contrast to the next group, which is the ones that are super ambitious. They want to buy their entire hometown. They're just going to keep on hustling forever and ever and ever. These are very valuable people to have in your GP team just because you know that they're always going to be there as long as they're alive. But in contrast to that level of ambition and getting a name for yourself and legacies and all that kind of stuff, there's the next one, which is some people have a section of society that they particularly want to help, or maybe it's animals, maybe it's rainforest, who knows what it is, but they realize that wealth is the best vehicle out there to actually make a real impact. So that's the other reason why some people want to get a commercial deal. So out of those five, Marcus, uh, which ones or what combination really describes you best? Yeah, I think probably a combination of a couple of them, Dan, probably, you know, the last one there, the uh, irrational need uh, to help tenants and maybe not just tenants, but as you said, uh, some section of society and the other one being trading time for wealth, you know, kind of when I, in the beginning, I talked about um, helping people uh, make an impact and leave a legacy. And so I think, you know, the, uh, the irrational need to help um, some section of society 
uh, goes along with that making an impact and, and part of leaving a legacy and also you know building that wealth um, helps you know create a legacy for my family as well as their ability to have an impact uh, and stuff even after i'm gone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is there a group in particular that you you have in mind a society like uh like maybe veterans or something like that so it's, it's a combination you know i wouldn't say that all of mine goes into one thing but some of the, the places we give back to include some veterans organizations you know we give to a few organizations that are combating human trafficking uh, and then, you know, some uh, other organizations that are going in, like building homes and schools in places like Uganda and things of that nature. So each one of them has a you know, specific reason, uh, connection to our lives or thing, you know, reasons we want to contribute to that. Um, but it's a, a little bit across the spectrum of organizations. That's a great answer. That's fantastic. All right. So the next segment is the six different roles. So I'll go through those in the audit for the audience in case you haven't, uh, if you haven't learned all these yet. But repositioner is the first role. A repositioner is a person who looks at a whole whack of different properties and they have to do the math. They have to figure out, okay, how's this property doing? Is there any upside? And then they get it under contract and make it happen. So they're in there. They are an acquisitions person, but what, how does a repositioner get upside? There are two main ways. The first one is through more efficient operations. In other words, they find ways to cut the costs, run more efficiently, but uh, part of the operations team, it's more complex than it sounds on the outset because I, I mentioned I have these little Benjamins going down the toilet here, and that's to let people know that, you know, like bookkeeping, uh, marketing to make sure that the uh, vacancy rate is low. You know, I have a marketing uh, background, so that's one of the things that I'm looking to contribute as well as uh, uh, tracking inventory for maintenance and whatnot. But uh, operations, more efficient operations like reduce water flow and things like that uh, those are that's one way to get upside but that's not always going to cut it especially now that real estate is so hot the other main way that a repositioner will get upside is by getting a contractor team so if you make the place nicer then you can charge more in rent and as easy as that you just have more money coming out of a property so that's the other way of doing it but there's a problem if you're working remotely like i am from the internet then you're going to need a local that's the boots on the ground. So uh, the boots on the ground make sure that the operations are working effectively and the contractors aren't cutting corners and things are getting done in a timely manner. Now, when most people think about picking up a uh, apartment complex, that's probably all they think about. But the other pieces of the puzzle are the financier. In other words, the bank. So when the repositioner wants to make this purchase, they turn around to the bank, they say, hey, lend me millions of dollars because this is millions of dollars. And of course, capital raisers would also be a type of uh, financier, but you know that's uh, kind of besides the point. The thing that uh, is interesting about the financier though is when you're asking for that loan, they're gonna have one more question, which is, who's your sponsor? A sponsor is a person who already owns a similar asset and uh, in other words, if you want to buy a 350 unit apartment complex and get a loan, somebody in the fold has to already own a 350 unit apartment complex. That's even if you are Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, if you want the loan, you have to have a sponsor. And there are some other details as well, like you have to have a balance sheet equal to the amount of the loan or greater. And then uh, also you have to have a certain amount of liquid cash. But those are the six main roles in an apartment complex deal or a commercial deal. So out of those six different roles, Marcus, uh, what is your core competency that you'd be most likely to contribute to a, uh, a commercial deal? Yeah, thanks, Dan. You know, uh, right now, probably mostly I'd be contributing as a repositioner. And then some also in some operations and then, of course, help them bring uh, capital uh, as well, uh, at least for the next year or so. The, the local part will be a little bit challenging from me. I'm probably not a lot of local help over here in England. So, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. You don't really need boots in the ground in uh, jolly old England. So that's cool. And then as far as a buy box goes, uh, that's your ideal property. And so we're talking about what's the unit count, what's the geographic area, and what's the class where it's much easier to say yes to that property than if it's a different, uh, a different area or unit count or, or class, Marcus. Yeah, so I'm generally looking for 100 plus units in acquisition and uh, primarily I'm looking from a geographic perspective in the Kansas City uh, region, Tulsa, and then uh, also some like in the, the DFW uh, College Station uh, area and stuff as well. So kind of there through the, the Midwest region and 
um, from a class perspective, typically looking at you know C plus B minus. So that's kind of stand, standard. That's what's easiest to say yes to. Um, you know, we do have some assets that kind of um, border on those limits and stuff, but that's what that's what we're looking for. Okay, excellent. And uh, in real estate in general, uh, everybody's is so helpful. And it was funny because you know, like with my background in digital security, you know, I I really don't trust people at face value. And what I've found is in commercial real estate, people are really really helpful. And I chalk that up to the fact that nobody is really all of the sides of the die, or at least you can't actively be all six sides of the die once it becomes an actual apartment complex but uh because everybody needs somebody everybody is out to help some people and we can help some types of investors or uh, operators or whatnot better than others so can you please describe the person that you're most suited to help in real estate than anybody else yeah i think you know a couple people that i would align with a lot and part of this goes to my experience i've been in both positions um as well as so you know people that have like uh a w-2 that either really really love their w-2 or very busy you know i understand that i'm at the tail end of my w-2 and spent a lot of months and years at sea where i was really busy or you know potentially someone that might be uh kind of a, have, has been an active investor you know maybe they manage properties themselves or have had property managers uh, but are just kind of tired of dealing with it and stuff so I, you know when i was back on the single family side you know, we self-manage and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to create some passive income. And then it turns out to be uh, a little bit more active than you, you assumed it was. And so, you know, that's part of the reason I created a long legacy was to like provide uh, educational resources to be able to, to help others understand like different strategies that could potentially help them reach their, their goals, um, you know, in, in a different way. So those are a couple of people, you know, that I think I align closely with and can use my experience to help, uh, help them. That's really fantastic. And, and we met through, uh, through Brian Briscoe. I met him through uh, LinkedIn and uh, we're always at those different meetups like the ones on Fridays. Uh, but uh, what is the best way to reach out to you? Is it through LinkedIn or do you have a website that's better or, or what's the best way? Yeah, you know, I'm on uh, LinkedIn quite a bit. I also have a website alonglegacy.com. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. It has all the, the social media on there. It has, you can send me a message through there, set up a time. Uh, to jump on the calendar and, and uh, have a chat. Awesome, awesome. And if you don't know me better, you know, my name is Dan Fradenberg. My background is in marketing, particularly the mass media uh, outreach. So that's lead capture and list segmentation and then the online sales funnels for anything like that. So LinkedIn or dandoesdeals.com, those are some of the best ways to reach me. But I have a favor to ask you in the audience there, which is if you look down here somewhere you'll see a red button and it says subscribe and it's a terrible 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 thing because it's red if you click on it it turns gray and that's much better and what it means is that youtube will start paying for these videos instead of me which is way 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 better and the good news is it doesn't cost you anything all it means is that my videos might show up on your list of suggestions if you ever actually go into the youtube uh, app at all to do anything Thing other than search so please do that you're doing me a huge favor but marcus this has been awesome catching up with you and getting to know you a little bit better awesome thanks for having me dan all right thanks